I never thought I'd be saying this, but the anti-vaccine movement can teach us quite a lot about why people reject God. Which is ironic, because the stereotype of an anti-vaxxer is that they're also really Christian, which is, looks kind of bad for Christians. <laughs> So the anti-vaccine movement, you have a bunch of evidence that says there is no link between vaccines and autism. On the other hand, you have a bunch of people who loudly insist that there is. Now, if this was like some evidence here, some evidence there, or it's inconclusive, or maybe one group's methods weren't good, things like that, you can have a, a conversation about that. But as it stands, it's not that. It's everything's fine. Lots of people, lots of experts, you know, it's peer reviewed. It's all of this good stuff. And then a bunch of people who are really loud and insist that this is the case. Which brings me to my first point. A bunch of non-experts with no evidence does not contradict one expert with evidence, let alone lots of experts with evidence. A sports analogy that may be relevant. So um, when I was a missionary at the University of Tulsa, one of the students shared this story. Uh, his aunt was visiting and watching a high school basketball game. And now since he's from a small town, one of the things you don't do is you don't badmouth the ref, but you know, she's not from there, so she is. She's saying, oh, that was a foul, and just and really yelling and being obnoxious. And the thing that he drew from that about authority, about expertise, is her opinion about whether the guy was foul is 100% irrelevant. The ref's opinion about whether he's foul is the only thing that matters. Does this mean experts are never wrong? Of course not. Experts can, in fact, be wrong. And this would be a scenario of, like, some experts say this thing, some experts say this thing. We can talk about that. Or maybe new research comes out and you realize, oh, a thing that we thought, a thing that we assumed, maybe isn't as true as we thought. That's important. This does not apply in the anti-vax thing. This specific scenario, in general, it does apply. Now, does this mean that non-experts just don't matter? Of course not. Experts can miss things. Sometimes having an outside perspective can be helpful, and sometimes you'll approach problems in a different way, and then that can lead to evidence for your side. I just want to say that because this is not what the case in the anti-vax movement is, but just in general, there could be a thing. Like, it's, it's not a, if you don't have expertise, then just get out of the picture. Just because one side yells louder than the other does not mean it's right. That statement applies to the anti-vax question. It also applies to the moral life that if one side, aka the world, the secular world, says here's how to live, and God says something else, just because the world yells louder does not mean that it's right. People will say something like, well, who is God to tell me what to do? I want to run my own life. God is the expert. You are the non-expert. So if the expert with lots of knowledge says that living this certain way, doing these certain things, whatever it is, is good, helpful, etc. That's a very strong case because this is an expert with a lot of subject matter knowledge. If you have a bunch of non-experts telling you, but that sounds stupid, you should live your life a different way, they don't have evidence, they don't have expertise, they are pretty much irrelevant. So if God says that drunkenness is sinful, which he does say that, and a bunch of non-experts say, no, drunkenness is fun, the non-experts are wrong, that's it. And I think the anti-vax movement really illustrates that, that we don't like expertise when it contradicts us. I just think we don't like anything when it contradicts us, so there, there's that. But when an expert contradicts us, we can no longer say, I know better than you. They actually know better than us because this is within their subject matter. Tangent, expertise applies to what you are an expert in, your subject matter, not other areas. It might apply to like related areas, like maybe as a mechanical engineer, you know some stuff about electrical engineering. Cool. But you wouldn't ask the chess grandmaster what his strategy for the war is, because then he'll say, well, send in the clergy, they can move diagonally. That was, that was a chess joke, guys. And God is not just one expert among many. He's God. He knows everything. He designed us. He actually knows stuff. So in God's case, saying this is how you should live, is not a question of one expert versus another. It's the expert versus everything else. And one final parallel between the anti-vax movement and God is that God is sometimes called the divine physician, that he is healing us, he's healing our soul. Now this is mostly in terms of spiritual woundedness. It also can apply to emotional woundedness and physical woundedness as well, but primarily it's spiritual because that's the biggest wound. So God wants to heal you. 
and he knows his art, he knows his craft, he knows what to do. And so it's a question of, do we follow his advice? There's this, I can't remember what saint said it, but like there's a, a scenario of three different patients coming to a doctor. And the doctor, they have all of the same condition, the doctor do gives them the same prescription. One of them says, no, I'm absolutely not gonna do that. One of them refuses to take the medicine because he will only take the medicine that he wants, not the one the doctor wants. And the third person says, whatever you prescribe, whatever the medicine you think is best, I will take. The correct answer for holiness is that third option. God, whatever it is you want for my good, however you want to heal me, that's what I want. Yes, be a hero today.